Don't limit yourself and what you think God can do with you and how He wants to use you because we're needed in this time for our voice, for our lives. Don't you want to be, don't you want your life to put your life in the bucket? To let your life be the sacrifice, to let your life be the offering. So once we have God purify us, He wants to set our mouths on fire. He say fire. fire. Woo, fire. No, you guys like that word. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so in Isaiah, it talks about how the seraphim came with a live coal in his hand and had taken from the tongs of the altar, which he touched with my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. I love how that came from the altar, like this place of worship. And I feel like so many times when we're in that place of, of just surrendering, kind of like Bill was talking about last night, just surrendering, it's this place of worship that then God comes with his fire upon acceptable sacrifice, that he wants to set us on fire. Because then when we have healed hearts, when we have whole hearts, then we can truly love the way that Jesus loved. We're able to really see people the way that God sees them. And so then that God can flow through us with his fire. And John the Baptist was doing that when he was calling people to repentance and, and baptizing them in the Jordan is he was saying, as for me, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who's coming after me is mightier than I. I'm not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I love that verse. And it's that purification from the baptism that prepared the people to receive the fire of the Holy Spirit, to make them a resting place for his fire. And that's what God wants. We, we have to go... And, you know, and it's like God, it's like even his fire is purifying too. Like he's burning up all the things that aren't of him. And what's so amazing is when you yield to God and you feel like, man, I'm dying to myself. When you yield to him, it's like you become more of who he made you to be, like more of who you really are. And that's so freeing to feel like you can really be yourself. It's so amazing because you think, oh, like I'm dying. Like I feel like I'm losing a part of myself. But actually he's just bringing to life more of who he made you to be. So it, 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 one of my favorite statements from Dr. Mike is trust the process. So trust the process. <laughs> he can lead you. <clears throat> and, and Peter received that fire from the Holy Spirit, which empowered him to preach boldly. And I believe that God wants to fill our mouths so that we would preach the word of God boldly. And he would use us to prophesy and he'd use us to be his representatives because he wants to send us out as a witness, as sent ones. Just like it says in the end of Isaiah 6, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here am I, send me. That he would send us out as witnesses in the earth to carry the heart and mission of God. And Isaiah, when he encountered God in this way, he was just suddenly moved by compassion to respond. He felt the call and was compelled to go. And as I've been saying, so many of us, when we feel this call, we, we wrestle with unworthiness. And recently I was reading in Luke about the calling of Peter. And Peter, you know, they're fishing all night and he's a professional fisherman. And suddenly they have this miraculous catch and he knew it was a miracle. And he came before Jesus, especially in the encounter in Luke. He says, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. And what hit me about this is Peter saw something that he knew was impossible. He didn't feel worthy to associate with someone like Jesus. And yet Jesus bestowed worth upon him. And he also called him into this lifestyle of the miraculous. It was like Peter was immediately introduced to the fact that what God was calling him to was impossible, but that it was possible through Jesus and that he was worthy to walk with Jesus. And I just thought that that was an amazing foundation for a lifestyle of the miraculous, because when we're called to do impossible things, we have to know that we're a child of God and that we're dependent upon God. And you see that in the calling of Peter that we're tethered to the one that can make impossible things possible. 
And so often God wants to take us on this journey where God so often chooses the least likely person. He chooses the least likely, (laughs) just like Gideon saying, I'm from the smallest tribe and I'm the weakest in my tribe. (laughs) And you see that all throughout the Bible and even throughout church history, you see that God chooses the weak and lowly things of the world to confound the wise. And that's just how he wants to move. (laughs) So if you don't feel qualified, that actually qualifies you. (laughs) Because we have to lean upon him in dependency. It's just like any good story. I, I had a Star Wars reference earlier. I do like different movies like that. I'm kind of a nerd. I like Lord of the Rings and stuff. Um, Yeah. (laughs) But you all know that in a good story, you see that this person is selected and they have to face all these challenges, but that's what makes the story rich is the fact that they're facing these things, that they're facing these challenges, that they're overcoming them. And you see how it's developing them into the hero that that they were born to be. And and that's exactly what God wants to do in our lives is that God wants to uh, just fill us fully with himself. And even when we're facing challenges, it's just making us more and more alive and more and more like him. And it's so beautiful that we get to go on this journey with God and, and, and that we get to continue to know him, that he's the prize that he's the prize, that knowing him is the prize. And so then when we're facing difficult things, it's just like Bill was talking about, that we always are getting to reap these rewards because he's just so kind. And it's the greatest gift, the greatest treasure to get to partner with the kingdom of God on the earth. So I wanna start shifting soon towards the end because I wanna have some time to pray for people. Um, But as I said, you see this throughout people's lives, just like um, if you saw the Jesus Revolution movie with with Lonnie Frisbee. Yeah. And how Lonnie was just a a hippie, strung out on drugs, and God encountered him in a powerful, significant way. And I believe that the Lord wants to do significant things, more, more more than you can think, just like that Ephesians 3.20 reality, more than you can ask, think, or imagine that that's what he's wanting to do in this time. And, and, and he's just choosing people and filling them with the spirit. I was really impacted as well from around that same time, Keith Green, who's also someone that was searching for God, grew up in Christian science, was doing drugs. And God encountered him and used him as a voice and used him to, to walk in revival and see people get touched and same for Lonnie and so many others that I could talk about, William Seymour, so many other people that have been used by God. Don't limit yourself and what you think God can do with you and how he wants to use you because we're needed in this time for our voice, for our lives. Don't you want to be, don't you want your life to put your life in the bucket? to let your life be the sacrifice, to let your life be the offering. One of my favorite messages um, from Blaine Cook that I heard years ago is about true fasting from Isaiah, that, that we would fast our lives, that we would fast ourselves to be given to the poor, the lost, the broken, the needy, to be given to those that were searching. Just like I was searching, just like at one point you were searching before you knew Jesus. That, that God wants to use it so we can make our lives count. And I believe that God just wants to remove the barriers that we place on ourselves. That he's taking people from obscurity and wanting to use them for great things. And, and I especially, like I said, was feeling that way for the younger generation, that as the world is bidding on this generation, that God is wanting to give platform and influence because, because we have influence because of online. And, and even if you're not online, you, know, you have influence wherever you're planted. Wherever you're planted, you can be sent out as a missionary. And I believe that in this time, God is raising up missionaries to America where we would see where we are as a mission field. Some of you, yes, God will call you to other countries, but, but God wants us to, to move as missionaries in America and in our jobs and, and in our workplaces, wherever he's planted us. You know, he, God's a farmer. He knows where to plant. He knows how to grow you. He knows what he's doing. And, and sometimes we can feel afraid that we're not planted in the right place. But God, I just pray, Lord, that you'd remove that fear 
Thank you, Lord. All right, I feel like God wants me to shift into praying for people. So I just wanna invite you to stand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's just stay focused on him. <clears throat> so let's, let's turn our attention to Jesus. I don't wanna get distracted from what he's doing in this moment. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Jesus. I feel like he wants us to lift our voices. Just say, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, come God, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Just anoint our voices, God, that we would be yielded to you, Lord, that we would be a vessel for what you're doing in this time, God. God, that we would be a vessel. I, I just want you to cry out and just pray for the things that you want God to do in your life. God, that you would use us to reach our neighbors. God, that you would use us, just the dreams in your heart. I just feel like God wants us to pray them. God, I pray that you would use us to reach uh, the generations around us. Holy Spirit, God, that we would be set on fire in this time, God. Lord, that you would just come and fill every part, every part, every part. God, that there would be a boldness that comes upon our voices, Holy Spirit. God, that you would fill us with boldness right now, God, that, that your spirit would fill our voices. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, let your fire rest upon our mouths. Let your fire fill us, God. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Fill us with your boldness. God, that there would be a supernatural bravery that comes upon people. Lord, that you'd break off the fear of man, God. That you'd remove the spirit of fear, God. God, that you'd fill us with yourself. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, fill us with yourself, fill us with yourself, fill us with yourself. Thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. Jesus.